Oh, Marty Bunyard weathering all the conditions down there, but soaking up the atmosphere as well. Well, today we're celebrating the next generation coming into the beef industry. And my guests come from the central west of New South Wales, where they had big Santa Gertrudis dreams and they're starting to make them a reality. Jack Courts and Eliza Whiteley, welcome to Beef TV. Thank you, uh, Lindsay. Thanks for having us, Lindsay. So, your union is based on a mutual love of the Santa Gertrudis breed, is that right, Jack? Yes, correct. <laughs> it's all started there. Um, I want to talk a little bit about your Nuffield Scholarship first because you've literally been floating around flying. You've been to Brazil recently, uh, off to New Zealand soon. Yeah, so uh, I've just uh, been awarded a Nuffield Scholarship for 2024, supported by Meat and Livestock Australia. Uh, I've completed about half the travel required. Uh, we went to Brazil, central Brazil and southern Brazil, up into Texas around Fort Worth and Austin, uh, Germany. Munich all the way to Berlin, and then Ireland and Northern Ireland as well. What are you seeking to find out? Uh, so I'm looking into maternal efficiencies of ruminant animals, so just looking at the key drivers there, genetics, nutrition, and trying to work out the, the key points and drivers to make a business more profitable from the maternal side. Any discoveries along the way or anything that's changing the trajectory of your perspective? Uh, hopefully I'll look into that in my next travels which will be to oct in October back to the UK and uh, New Zealand next year. Um, this, the trip I've just completed is in a travel group so we saw quite a broad range of things there not specifically relevant to my topic however uh, we saw pecan trees in Texas you've still got to genetically develop them to be efficient water use efficiency is one thing that comes to mind so it's definitely correlations there back to ruminant animals. That is so interesting that you're taking from the from the world of horticulture into the world of agriculture. Yeah that's right. Yeah, yeah so fascinating. So um, tell me about Glenalbin Santa Gertruda Stud. Uh, Glenalbin Santa Gertruda Stud is a family business. Um, Eliza and I we've finished succession for our generation now. Um, so we took over last year in August um, this year in August the 19th will be our first bull sale while we're uh, co-principal, so we're really excited about that. I like people smiling in the same sentence as succession. <laughs> that doesn't happen very often. <laughs> no. uh, can you tell me what went well in the succession process that you could share with other farmers? What did you guys get right? Uh, I think what we got right uh, is communication and just open communication. Everyone relaying what they want. I'm one of four. Uh, my three siblings were not necessarily interested in the operation of the business so that uh, made it easier for us but again just open communication from that older generation down and, and within our generation. Eliza do we like the odds of the Santa Cadrutus heifer that's out there now competing for Supreme Champion Interbreed? Oh do we ever I think she's a beauty I think uh, we've definitely had our eye on a few cattle here and it's wonderful being at Beef Week it's our first together and especially our first as the business with Glen Alvin so we're, we're happy to be here. You'll be back? We'll yeah. be back, will we ever? Now Absolutely. tell us a little bit about your involvement in agriculture because if I remember correctly, your parents are on the wool side of things. Oh, originally yes, and then they sort of uh, drifted to the self-shedding sort of uh, sheep. Blaspheme but... if you're in the merino space, <laughs> but go on. I know, I know, certainly not something that's often discussed on the beef week. But yes, mum and dad, small, small place not far from where we are now. Um, and that's really evolved with now off farm for myself as an optometrist. And meeting Jack, we went all the way to Geelong in Victoria to meet Marry the Boy Next Door. And uh, so that's quite funny, Jack, Marcus Oldman and, and me with uni. So we've travelled full circle now um, and back in the ag industry. However, a whole new space for me uh, on the, the, the seed breeding and the stud sock. It's a whole, whole new thing for me. So but I'm you're soaking it. it all up. And one of the things I love about the pragmatism of the two of you is yes you're moving into that succession space Eliza you're also saying you know I love agriculture I'm totally invested in it and you know as soon as I get home from my professional job this is where I go into ag and first thing in the morning but during the day you have your off farm income you have your big professional career tell us a bit about your day-to-day -day job so day to day it definitely probably differs from most optometrists especially uh, where I'm based in Dubbo so I'm really passionate about the pathology which is all the health of the back of the eye um, as well as paediatric vision so my day to day involves working with an ophthalmologist to try and further that skill set and then it's making sure that Jack and I communication is key and uh, that we converse about what needs to be done on farm. Because um, you've got a limited amount of time we before do. your work starts. Yeah. Uh, absolutely and, and 
ensuring, I think, from my perspective, more the accounting side and, and what does our business need to, to grow. And I think it's good having, we want two different skills we learnt today from um, uh, where we were in the Next Gen Forum about, our, it's really a team. And so sometimes I get a, a little bit um, nervous about, well, this is not my my skill set and maybe not my happy place but um, we've got two different perspectives working on our business from different angles and so I think that's what we try to come together with not you know take us apart so Eliza can you educate me on something I should know about my ocular health I'm at that age now where glasses have just become a reality <laughs> oh Lindsay look there, there's plenty of things but I would say specifically in ag and you know a lot of cockies who are our, our parents' age and our, and our mates, um, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So from an eye perspective, you'll lose 50% of the brain tissue in your eye before you'll notice anything's wrong. So that's why it's really important that you uh, have regular checkups from an eye health perspective and make sure that as much as we look after animals on farm, um, we need to be be healthy as humans, so make sure you look after yourself off farm. So the same cycle, you book in to see the dentist a couple of times, you do the same, you're saying, with your optometrist. Absolutely. Or ophthalmologist, wonderful. Now, I want to know as well, because you and I met down at Sydney Royal Easter Show, uh, and you were there as part of a really fabulous program that's been running for 62 years. Tell us about that experience. Lindsay, I was lucky enough to be a finalist for the Young Woman Competition for the Ag Show Sydney Known Royal. Known up in Queensland as Showgirl. Showgirl, that's it. Um, Showgirl in Sydney by the former name and that was a really wonderful experience with um, 14 other fabulous women and meeting some great people in the industry, a few of which are here this week as well. Um, and so having that opportunity to be in some pretty incredible rooms, uh, meeting one particular story if I may, there's myself, uh, the person to my right is the Governor General, the person to my left has an Order of Australia and I'm sitting there with my uh, Wellington Life Member badge thinking I'm not quite sure how I ended up in this room but I'm very grateful to be here. And it's remarkable how involved those dignitaries are actually with ag shows. And they're really interested in what's happening on the farm. Uh, it's been such a joy to chat to you both here today, Jack and Eliza. Before I let you go, a couple of quick fire questions. Who's going to take out the bull today? Which breed? Uh, McGonagall Bull, Santa Gertrudis. You think? Oh, I mean, we're biased in that question. You know what I answer. Also, has you've to just be. learned about teamwork, so agreement here is a good yes. idea. <laughs> yeah. uh, how do you take your steaks? Ooh. Medium. Oh, I'd say medium rare. Uh, what has been the highlight of beef for you so far? Uh, probably the networking, the connections. Absolutely, and I think seeing how people do great things both on farm and then in the corporate. Um, sector and how the two you need to be aligned in in both um, and you need to have an understanding on what the rest of the industry is doing not just from a breed specific perspective so it's been a great week thanks for your time Jack and Eliza thank you well 10% of a